Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Escape from San Francisco podcast. I have a really great guest today. Um, I'm at the Hello Plants Market here on Broadway in Oakland, California. I have my guest. Uh, he is someone that puts these events on. Um, someone that I've been in, in contact for for a while, trying to get trying to get this going. Um, I, I, pleasure to to be here and uh, to speak with you today and, and learn a little bit more about what you do here. Hello, Jenny. Hi. <laughs> is it your first time on the podcast? Yeah, it is. I watch podcasts a lot, but I'm never on one. Oh, no. Uh, that's good. I love when people are the first time on a podcast. I know it's like a little nervous being on, on camera and whatnot. Um, I'm, I'm happy that I'm here. I'm thankful that you let me into your space and um, you allow me to come in here and interview you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. I appreciate you know, what you put on here. I got into plants during the quarantine because my girlfriend got really into plants and so she was showing me you know all these plant videos and and like youtube and and then we would go to different places around the bay area just to try to find uh you know rare plants and also uh stuff for the house um the rarest plant she has is a pink princess oh i have like three yeah three of those yeah those are like four or five hundred bucks i know but <laughs> I started propagating them, and it's like, okay. all right, now I got a couple of them. So, what got you into plants, and and how did you start uh, this movement, this market? Um, so I originally started getting into plants when a friend of mine he had a garden, and he was like super into his garden, outdoor garden. Okay. And then I got like super into a garden because he made me garden box. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, all right let's do the indoor thing so me and my friend we started making it like this goal for us to go to every home depot to see what they had back when i bought plants from home depot i don't do that no more <laughs> why why not buying plants for home depot what do they Cause home depot don't care home depot don't care about their plants they, they treat the plants wrong or they just they're not good to uh... i don't want to i don't want to you know i think that home depot should hire me there you go. There you go. <laughs> nah, um, but basically Home Depot just have like vendors and like, if you ever go there, sometimes like you'll see a car full of dead plants and it's like, because they don't really like, I don't know. I don't want to go there, into Home Depot. <laughs> oh, okay. I understand. The main focus is not primarily on plants. So being there and, and seeing your friend with the outdoor garden, what would spark that curiosity for you or that interest into, into the plants? Um, because he cared like it was something that he was like everything was about his garden and it was always expanding it was like oh I got this garden in my front yard but now I'm gonna put one in my backyard and I'm gonna build a fence around it because I don't want the dogs to get into it and it was just like it was just always evolving and you can hella tell that he hella cared about his plants and then he would start teaching me about it and then or this is what you should do with a tomato plant and this is you have to plant them like this far apart from each other and then i just got into it and then i wanted to show him my garden like look at what i did and then that turned into all right, I'm gonna put plants in my house. And then I'm a, I got five plants. Now, oh damn, like you start to see all these other plants and now you want them all. And now I got hella plants. Now it just sparked that that plant, that plant high that, 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 right. that comes to. I'm gonna move the mic. Um, yeah, so it, it's just um, that that excitement. It goes, I, I seen my girlfriend go through. I seen like, all right, let's go look. They have this plant over here, let's go look. Uh, let's let's go to this nursery <laughs> right here because they sell this plant for you know that no other place sells it and so for the longest time um we were going to different places throughout the bay area just to you know go look and see if she could have you know a good find craigslist offer up i was on all of that stuff like i got some stuff off craigslist nobody goes on craigslist anymore but older people and yeah. older people be having some gems for sale she uh my girlfriend bought a uh, my girlfriend alexa she bought a um uh, what is it called? i think a philodendron or like the the big one that grow like really like if you let them grow they grow like really long Monst uh, a monstera sorry okay a, mon a monstera she, was, she, she bought a monstera on craigslist for really cheap and then you go to the plant store or the nursery and it's like double or triple the price and she bought it off um some lady that just sells on craigslist and she got it for like maybe 
30 bucks and then go to the for the same size that the monster You're was telling everybody where oh. to go yeah, okay. i'm just joking yeah, that's just <laughs> i mean i hope there is a price now but uh they uh, they delivered it and everything so that was a really cool part about it we didn't have to go pick it up um and then yeah so so y'all got hella plants how many plants do you have now 80 80 plants <laughs> i don't think she's that bad i got 80 plants 80, 80 plants so after you got into you know make or having your own garden having your own indoor plants and then getting to the point where um you are you you're collecting these plants you're you're propagating you're doing all that what sparked the interest of creating hella plants market okay so basically i was taking care of so many plants that um i was just like i should start selling them and I wasn't really selling them like how I sell them now. I was more into like my crystals and stuff. And one day on um, Valentine's Day, I was selling crystals and I brought a lot of plants to sit on the table just to look cute. And everybody bought all the plants. And I was like, oh, they like the plants. So then I started selling my own plants and then I realized like, oh, I don't really have that many places where I can go sell my plants because people, not everyone are into plants. So even if I go to a vending event, that doesn't mean I wanna make money because people don't like plants. So I was like, well, I should create my own, you know, pop-up shop or market where it's only plant-centered. So I was like, boom, we'll just have Hello Plants at the market. And we'll just, and that's what it's called, Hello Plants. Where, where did you used to sell your crystals at before? Um, I was selling them on like Facebook, Instagram, and then that on February, on um, Valentine's Day, I was at the lake, and I had me like this cute box, and it had like a plant, a crystal, like a candle. It was like a Valentine's Day gift, but everybody was buying the plants. Did it shock you when it sold out right away? It shocked me when I brought my own house plant out there, and the girl was like, "I want this plant." I was like, uh, "It's not for." She was like, what do you want for it? I was like, yeah. She was like, I'll give you $30. I was like, I'll pay $12 for this plant. I was like, you can <laughs> have it. Like, I was like, you can have it. It was a it was a pink aglonomia or a Chinese evergreen. And I know I got it from Home Depot. Cause I was like, this is hella cute. It's pink. And she bought it for me for $30. And I, that's when I knew. I was like, well. I, that's that's it like you never know what the value of something until you get you know you find the right people for it and everything got a price that's that's it another a good j hidden gem out there is Trader Joe's mm -hmm. if you ever go to Trader Joe's I think some of their plants there are really Dude. easy or like cheap but they I like uh, getting um, just uh, table flowers you know mm -hmm. for the table they, that's what I like to go because they last a long time there like right now I think Trader Joe's Trader Joe's have um, um allocations like regal shield or something like that for only like 17.99 and they got hell of them like outside like on their racks and everybody in the store got you just see everybody pushing their carts with uh allocations in them and i'm at home i'm up in trader joe's like heck no they buying all these plants they should be buying these plants from me but no trader joe's got the jig they sell them at wholesale those are the the trader joe's plants are at wholesale price um home depot plants are at wholesale price so if you usually go to a wholesaler that's how much it would cost for somebody like me or my vendors that's here so one of the things um i think it was for uh my girlfriend's uh mom's birthday we we're trying to find her a, a big monstera Mm -hmm. And we couldn't at like Lowe's or Home Depot back in Fresno where we're from. Mm -hmm. And so like these big corporations, they weren't selling that type of plant. And like we we're going to several of them and they're like, no, we don't have it or we're not selling or maybe we sold out or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then we called the nursery. And yeah, sure enough, we went to this nursery and they had like all of them. Big ones. And so, I mean, you there is market for a lot of these places. It just mm -hmm. depends on the price. If it's right for you, you mm -hmm. go out there and get it. So when you when you sold your plants at the lake and you decided to make uh hella plants uh market where was the first place you popped up at the first place that i popped up for hella plants market was in an auto body shop and it reeked of oil and i was grateful for the space though i was so grateful for the space i promise you 30 minutes before the vendors was walking in 
I was throwing sand on oil on the ground, sweeping, like putting my back into it. Like, but it was like people said, oh my God, it's like, it, it, it was a great turnout, but the first Hella Plants Market was on June 13th at an auto body shop on like 23rd off of Broadway. That's my brother, um, his him and his friends auto body shop. And I was like, hey, I wanna, I wanna throw this event. He was like, come on, let's do it. And he charged me hell, hella low. Now that I know how much it costs to rent out venues, he charged me hella low for the space, but it was oil on the ground. Like people was, I was like, oh my God, I hope people tables cover up the oil, but it was packed out. And now when I think about it, I'm like, damn, I really did come kind of far because that auto body shop was, we was moving cars out like the day of the event, moving cars out, dumping sand, pushing it around. Like it was crazy. So, so when did you put on your first event? June the 13th. June 13th last year? Of 2021. Uh, 2021. So you, you put on your first event. So today, what number of event is this one? It might be like seven, eight, seven. That is a long way from, from your first one. Only a year ago. Not even a year ago yet. Every, okay, I'm in June. They're about eight, probably eight, because I did that one, and then I did two, and then two weeks later, I did another one, which was way too soon, but I am going to have a Hello Plants Market in San Francisco next Sunday. I, I saw that one. So are you planning to do it, like, every month? Is that the goal? Or? Um, yeah, the goal is to do a Hello Plants Market once a month. Um, usually, I do it with Oak Stop in Oakland, but I had somebody come to me and ask me if I could try it out in San Francisco. So I decided I'll try it out in San Francisco at the San Francisco County Fair building. Nice. I saw I saw the flyer for that one and everything. It should be a really uh, good time. I'm uh, nervous. Why are you nervous to be in the San Francisco? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know nothing about San Francisco. I mean, because it's a new thing. It's a new. It's new. Like, I was nervous about this until I was looking. You know, I'm, I'm always nervous. Being, so being the one in, in charge and everything, you have a lot of responsibility you have to take care of. Does that nervousness ever go away? Never. Never because I do it for the small businesses. So, like, if people don't show up and it's just small businesses are just sitting around, then I, didn't, I don't feel like I did my job. Like, I don't think that I accomplished what I came to accomplish. I want to make sure that these small businesses go home happy. How many businesses, when you do the Hello Plants Market, um, do you have at the events? Um, here, it's about 33 today. In San Francisco, I'm trying to have 50. Um, at the Holiday Market at Silk Creative Space, it was about 55. So I, I found out about uh, Hello Plants Market through uh, a buddy, uh, Wacko Donuts. And so Wacko is hey. a really cool, he's a really cool guy. Um, he's the one that posted he was at one of those events and so that's why I went to one mm -hmm. and I you know went to go buy one of his donuts there and he's you know very genuine uh, human being and so that's how I got put on through the Hello Plants Market and then my girlfriend loves plants so it was just like a perfect match going to those going Vegan to the market. Vegan food and plants natural organic artists all that like that's what we do it's like a theme like that's I think that that's what makes this a successful market is because it's not like a flea market. It's like a theme thing for people who like plants, like me and you. And you also have a really good food truck out there. Um, are they called the, the vegan? The vegan head chefs. They're my peoples. And they, they always come to the markets? or um, They don't always come, but they've been to maybe like four out of the eight-ish or however many I had so far. Yeah, they've been a four because they was at the, they did this one, they was at First Friday. So, and I think two other times. So what's what's the process going, that goes behind uh, putting on the Hello uh, Plants Market? How many people do you have involved in, and what is like the level of like difficulty to put on one of these events? Um... I would say that I'm kind of getting used to it. Um, I think that now it's getting a little hard because I'm getting a lot of applicants. 
like I have to go through a lot of applications and I have to pick 30 people out of 100, 200 people who apply. And it's like, it, it's kind of like, I try to like prioritize the people who actually have plants. And then I just kind of trickle down to like the other stuff, like clothing brands, like run the world clothing. I'll add them in there just to kind of like switch it up. But I would say it's hard because there are people who I want to give a chance to because it's not always it's not all about oh this person got a lot of followers this person it's it's like I look at do you care like if I'm looking at your brand and you just sharpied on blue blue princess lip balm with a sharpie I'm gonna be like you not you want to come and sell that to people like you know, or do you have what you need to have, like, just in general, like, how much effort do you put into your business? And then it just, it is hard, actually, because I'm going to tell you, when small businesses apply to this and you accept them and they give you your money and they trust you with your money, with their money, like, you have to follow up. Like, if they got the questions, you got to answer the questions. So, it's 33, 30, 30 people out there. But I'm going to say 30. 30 people out there. I got 30 people on my phone all the time asking me, like, hey, can I bring one table? Or did you have a chair for me? Or did you care if I would use a blue tablecloth? Like, I'm like, I don't care. Like, do you mind if I come at 1030 instead of 10? Or, hey, I you know, I can't come no more. So it's like. It's stressful, for sure. And is there a lot of money you have to deal with? Do you have to put, like, a deposit to rent a space? For the space? I mean, yeah, like, to rent a space is, like, yeah, it's a whole process. So you have to find the venue. You got to, I got to put my money on the venue. I got to find the vendors. I got to find the staff. Um, I got to find, really, I really want a photo of a uh, uh, photographer but sometimes I just get lucky because people come with their cameras like the DJ like I gotta follow up with the DJs the bartender the this you know it's a lot of stuff that I I'm pretty good with my spreadsheets that my spreadsheets helped me a lot I would say but yeah yeah I mean that sounds like very very chaotic and it takes a lot like a really strong uh, minded individual to know how to run that and when we we're talking earlier you're telling me you're a conductor so like you have a lot uh-huh. of you know you know how to how to oversee a lot of things at once and so that does that help you i with think this the you said like being a conductor yeah um no i think that being a conductor I actually take away from oh sorry the the door. I don't know how the door opens. The door just start opening like that. I don't know what's going on. How old on, is this building? Ancestors <laughs> just walked in. Um, but I would say that the being a conductor kind of like I would say that it kind of stopped me from being great a little bit because when you're on the railroad, they got you for twelve hours. Sometimes I got stuff to do like talking to my. Um, graphic designer they got questions but I'm on a train and I can't really respond but then that's why I try to get somebody like Nina who's like assistant manager like on my helmet like you need to do this you need to do that or order my flyers for me or whatever she could do and whatever she can do she'll do it whatever she can't she'll let me know whatever but she helped me a lot I have help you seem like you have a pretty good help I mean it's I can imagine having a full time career and putting events like this at a lot of the work that goes into the into the production and everything just to get it going and keep it maintaining it. Um, do you ever foresee yourself switching to this like full time? I think that I, w- I think that my goal. I think that um, I would like to do this and like travel with it. Like if I can take the Hello Plants Market to Houston for a month or a month or like do one in, in New York, boom, bounce to like Florida or something. You know, so like a little tour. 
and just get other plant vendors or people in like interested in plants around the country to be a part of the Hello Plants market. That's a goal. So I'm just going to start small in California, move from Oakland, get to San Francisco, head to L.A., Sacramento. Is San Francisco your first place outside of Oakland to do this? Well, technically, I did the um, holiday market in um, Berkeley, but it felt like Oakland. It's Berkeley. It's Berkeley. Berkeley is Berkeley. But yeah. But <laughs> it didn't feel like it was too far away. So that's the first. Um, so it's your first time going to uh, so over cr- a bridge. The bridge. Yeah. All right. That, I mean, that sounds fun. I can't wait for that. To, when is that again? That's on the 29th? Uh, 30th. Oh, the 30th. January 30th at Golden Gate Park or at San Francisco County Fair Building, which is in Go- at Golden Gate Park, in Golden Gate Park. I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Right next to the San Francisco Botanical Garden. So Right next to the Botanical Garden. Yeah, yeah. so you go to the Hello Plants Market, boom, you head over to the Botanical There's Garden. There's a lot of free parking out there, especially if you park inside the park. If you want to park. For, um, if you do it inside the park, you have to go early because that gets filled up really quick. Yeah, it'll. Um, I think that the parking will, but Sundays is a little bit different because there's all free parking, so even the meters are free and everything. Right. So it's good. It's good free parking, but if it's a good, nice sunny day, the park gets really packed. Don't be negative. I'm it, not. I'm not. No, I'm just the saying. Park, I, when I went, I visited. I visited there on a Sunday, and I mean, anywhere in San Francisco, parking's gonna be weird. So look, you can get on public transportation. Yes. There's public transportation that will take you from the bar straight to the San Francisco County Fair building. You can get an Uber. Uber. I won't have alcohol at that event, so you won't be getting drunk or nothing. Uh, well, we don't ever want you to get drunk, but you won't get tipsy. Um, but yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of uh, like bars in the area, and if, yeah, if it's other drink, stuff to do. Yeah, yeah make a, a day out of it. It's some pretty cool stuff there, and then you can go to the Academy of Science right there. Right there. Yeah, there's you every. You can go roll around in the grass. Yeah, and then they have like a little like uh, skate rink in the park that's like not too far from there. But you, yeah, because you're from San Francisco. I, I'm not from San Francisco. I'm from Fresno originally, oh, but I, Fresno. I live, live in, in San Francisco. Okay. I live by Golden Gate Park. Oh, you live over there. So I live like uh, towards the end of the park on the other side, like in the Richmond district. Um, So I'm I'm not too far away. I'm like maybe like a 15 minute, 20 minute walk. So Uh, you coming? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll I'll try to make my way out there. I get you a promo code. Yeah, let let me know. (laughs) Me and Alexa definitely go go check it out again. Always want to support because I see what you do for other people and how you help other businesses. That's why I wanted to bring you on because... Not only do you put on a great event, you're uplifting, you know, a lot of other people as well. And, you know, you're sharing, you know, that's what it's supposed to be, you know, bringing the community together and then seeing everyone out there that, you know, constantly coming, asking questions, buying from other people. That makes a lot, that, especially if people are, are like, this is like their living and their the way they, they um, you know, try to try to make it in this world. So that's that's major props to you for everything that you do Thank on that you. part. Thank you. Yeah. And there will be different vendors that you never seen before because it's on the other side of the bridge. Definitely, that's 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 a cool part. And see. I'm juiced because I get to meet a whole bunch of other small businesses, and yeah, it's gonna try, it's gonna it's gonna be fun. Do you still sell plants? Yeah, I do. So, what's your plant store called? What's my plants? What? Do you, what's your store called? Um. Okay. So, I'm in the middle of rebranding. Um. So I don't really want to drop my name. For oh, that. okay, okay. It's it's gonna be cool though. But right now, if you was to look me up, I'm at Lavi, Lavi Nay on Instagram, L A V I E N A Y, or Lavi Botanicals. But I'm in the middle of rebranding, so I haven't really been like pushing my brand that much. I've been pushing Hella Plants Market more, but my brand will be out there by march 1st y'all gonna know who i am that's, I already that's know. it that's it that I, I can't wait till you go to san francisco then you're gonna go from there to maybe la then out LA. houston i already been looking at a venue there in you go LA. la's right for it you gotta go out there LA make for it real. i already did i did an event at um in la in uh december on december 11th i sip and sander a coffee a black owned coffee shop so like i i got my name i was trying to like get my name out there by nice. doing that event so I'm, you know, one foot in the door. There it is. There it is. How do, how do you feel for your first time doing a podcast? Uh, it's really fun. 
It's it's pretty fun. I'm not a big fan of my voice, but I it's think cool. uh, honestly, I've been doing this for a while, and I'm, I'm still not a big fan of my own voice. But I think that's just something everyone goes through. Yeah, and I watch a lot of podcasts. So, which one of your which one of your favorites? Um, well, I watch them with my friends. So he watched Tim Dillon. I don't know if you heard of. I know Tim, Tim Dillon. Dillon. He's really funny. He is he is ridiculous. He's just and a character. You, you never know if he's serious he's or if he's trying to be funny. So Tim Dillon, and then everybody watches. What's the dude name? Uh, uh, I like a lot of um, Tiger Belly. Um, I've never heard this of that. one of my, my one of my favorite ones. Um, they have a really good podcast. It's with a comedian and, and his uh, girlfriend. Um, a lot of comedians do podcasts. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a thing to do. I mean, they're entertainers. So they, they should be really good at doing that because they're really good at entertaining and stuff. But the Tiger Valley is with Bobby Lee and his uh, girlfriend. Um, I forget her name all the time. I forget it. But Bobby Lee is like a comedian. He was on Mad TV. He's he's been around for a long time. He's Korean. He's a funny, funny guy. I seen him. I seen him live a couple of times. Um, but I love watching podcasts, and that's what got me into doing it. Um, and I just wanted to tell, share stories of other people and share the stories of the Bay Area and, and show what's good going on because I hear so much negativity about the Bay Area. I hear negativity about San Francisco all the time and living here. I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. There is a lot of bad stuff, but like, there's a lot of great stuff too. And let me, sh- let me seven show you. Birds feather flock together. So if that's what you into, that's what you're doing, then that's what you're doing. But people like us, we birds of a feather. We 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 doing positive stuff. That's so it. that's what we see. We see positive stuff. I mean, I live in deep East Oakland. I live in the hood, so I yeah. I'm still a positive person, even if I live in a bad place. Yeah. I I watch people get up and go to work every day. That's what it is, you know. Put put one shoe on at a time. You got to go out there. You got to go do your thing. Right. And so um, we are coming to a break. All right, we're back from the break. And so um, at the break, you're saying you grew up in the Deep East Oakland? I live in Deep East Oakland. Oh, live in Deep East Oakland. I live in Deep East Oakland. I grew up in Maxwell Park, um, and I went to school in, like, San Leandro area. Maxwell Park is in Oakland, too. Um, Yeah, my parents are not together, so I live in two different places, so that gets kind of weird, but yeah. Yeah, I I can understand that. So you grew up in two different places at the same time? Yeah, pretty split in the weeks, but yeah. How did you like growing up, or how was it for you growing up in Oakland and then having to go to school in San Leandro? Them kids in San Leandro was was ratchet as the other kids. <laughs> like it didn't mean, it didn't make that much of a difference. Them kids wasn't no different. Everybody who was going to San Leandro was going home to Oakland too, for the most part. Like. I don't know, like, I I wouldn't imagine it being that much different. I mean, everybody wanted to go to SL or Berkeley, so. It, it was just, like, one of the things. Is it something, like, parents wanted their kids to go to those type of schools and I to get guess. out of Oakland? I don't know. My mama just wanted me to go there. I, lo- I, I We literally used my grandma address, so. Yeah, I, I know a couple people that are from here that, you know, did the same thing or they went to school in Berkeley. Um, but growing up in Oakland, um, what do you love about Oakland? The culture, the people, the food. The food's amazing. The food. I like food. I don't care. I like food. I like food. Food makes me happy. I, I think long and hard about where I want to go eat. And I got a few places that I hit hard. What's your favorite spots? Or you don't have to say if you don't want to burn them out. Oh, it's okay. Um, I mean, I like Asamara, Ethiopian food. I like Bakes Hill Betty. I like the taco places. Like, it's a taco place on Foothill and 42nd. And they got the the Lars ice cream up in there, too. That place is hella good with the spicy chicken tacos. Um, it's hella different places that I go to. Hella, like... I really love uh, Fruitville area. Um, I used to work out there, um, and there was some really amazing Mexican food out there. 
Yeah. I love Mexican food, being Mexican myself, um, escaping from the city. City, I'm not, I love the Mexican food there, but I'm, I don't think it's the best. And so I think Oakland has some really good Mexican food. Tacos al Gordo. Um, I think the other one is. You like Tacos al Gordo? Taco. On High Street? Um, I don't know. No, on, uh, on International by Burger King. No. I love that place. I used to go there all no. the time when I was in college. I, I don't know. I haven't been there in a while, but that, that was one. That was I one can't. of my. That was one of my good spots. But also, there's a another spot that serves fish tacos. I think that one is tacos, uh, um, Sinaloa, or something like that. Probably like down into with the orange truck. Yeah, it's it's not far from tacos uh, Guadalajara, which is. Uh, yeah, no, it got the orange. It's yeah, the orange truck. The orange truck. Those are my favorite spots that I, that I hit up here. But there's also Alameda has some really good spots Alameda too. Alameda got some good spots. If you want to get a little bougie, you can go to Crave Vine. Cray Vine is pretty good in Rock Ridge, Zachary's, you know, because I shop at like Farmer Joe's and okay. Trader Joe's and Sprouts and stuff. So mm-hmm. I get a little bougie, uh, a little bougie. Go to get you a, a, um, a pesto crepe from Cray Vine. Don't be up in there doing too much, though. Like, I don't want to go to Cray Vine and be like, yeah, why'd I tell them to come here? <laughs> <laughs> so, the culture, the food, the people. What else do you love about Oakland? Um, uh, I mean, I wouldn't really want to live anywhere else but here. Like when people are like, "Oh, you gonna move?" I mean, everything about it. I mean, it's it's a different place than what it was when I was a kid. But for the most part, it's what I know. So I, I mean. I don't know. I don't really know what I don't like about it, honestly. Um, it's some stuff I don't like about it, but just like everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah everywhere has a good and the bad, and that's one yeah. thing. Uh, I when because I because why y'all be driving like that? <laughs> <laughs> like what, one of my first experience <laughs> driving in in Oakland because I didn't know I was at a red light turning left, and um, a car next to me just literally just goes right around me on a red light just turns left and i'm just like what the heck is going on here that's what i'm saying i always think to myself like what if i had a kid in the car like you doing the most i see people go on sidewalks i see people do some crazy stuff out here but it like i don't know it's just like i kind of like used to it now being out here a little bit more but that's the only thing like why y'all drive like that like what what's the reason that's all like <laughs> it is what that's, it is. <laughs> that's the only it's thing different. That I got to say is for what? Oh, Rico Rico Taco is good. Where's Rico Taco at? Rico Rico Taco is by Lake Mary on Lakeshore. It's right next to IB's on Lakeshore. Rico Rico Taco is hella good. I don't... Gordo's, Gordo's in Berkeley is mm-hmm. hella good. Good? Yeah. Don't get me started. I like food. Um, All right. But yeah, um, Oakland is a very unique place that a lot of people, they understand that. That's why they like to be here. That's why they come here, because they understand that's a very unique place. And Oakland has some of the best weather. I don't know if people really Realize, understand that. The, yeah. Oakland is some of the best weather in the Bay, because you get it warm here, but it's also not too hot. But it's not too cold here either. Like, it's perfect weather. They have perfect summer weather. Like, San Francisco's freezing all the time, all year round. It's just freezing and foggy and cold. And then you go to Oakland, it's sunny and nice. And I know, because you're from Fresno. And I worked at the rail yard. I worked in the rail yard in Fresno. And it's 108. 100. And then it's still, it's still 90 Miserable. at nighttime. Oh, yeah. And you busy. think, oh, yeah, I'm about to work in the night. It's about to be a breeze. I ain't about Mm-mm. to sweat my clothes off. Slow. I will sweat on the railroad. 15 minutes being in the middle of the tracks. The tracks... The sun just hitting the tracks, and you just out there, and the sun just beaming on you. For working with the, for the railroad, have you been all throughout the state of California? Uh, I would say so. I mean, I've been to Bakersfield to Colton, Bakersfield to L.A. I've been from Roseville to Bakersfield. I've been from Roseville to Dunsmere, Ro- Dunsmere Roseville to Sparks. Um, I've been to S- Dunsmere to Klamath Falls. Oh, so you've been up away north, northern California, all the yeah, way down to southern California. I hate Dunsmere. I said if if the railroad ever sent me to Rose uh, to Dunsmere again, I'm not working there no more. I'm quitting. 
I'm quitting. You can't. They can't pay me enough money to go to Dunsmuir at all. I don't blame you. I don't. I don't. Something in my spirit don't feel right up it, there. It's different. Of Northern California, it's different. Oh no, you, they be. I, I don't fit in around here. I be like, oh no, oh no. Yeah, it's it's, it's different up there. But seeing you um, travel around um, California with your work, with your job, now being able to take Hello Plants Market, whoever knows to the next place, next city maybe in the next state um that's something that i look forward to seeing you know through social media where you take it and, and bringing a space where other small businesses could come together and they have the community thrive that way and that's something that's like important to me is seeing the community thrive and seeing exactly. people come together that's the way you have to make it out here it's so damn expensive in the bay area right. it's just like you have to get sometimes an opportunity to express yourself and let your creative side you know flourish because there's not a lot of spaces where people can come together and be creative because exactly. it's just too expensive and exactly. there's and it's just not open enough as as people would like to think right and so just seeing that and everything the space you put on i just want to once again thank you for letting me come here and interview you and let us like look around the area and maybe buy some plants today get some good food and uh, i appreciate it thank you thank you for having me i appreciate you all right thank you